You know, first time I think I heard Brother James Knox was in Monroe, North Carolina, and um, didn't know who he was. I was in college here at Tabernacle, and uh, I was trying to find a way to get to Northern Ireland to see if God wanted me to be a missionary there. And I had called BIMI, I had called Macedonia, I'd, I, I had tried to reach out to as many different missions boards as I could find and couldn't find really anybody that would, uh, could tell me of anybody in, in Ireland. And at that meeting, I think it was the same meeting, Brother James, um, it got back to Brother James, there's a, there's a young man here who's trying to get to Northern Ireland. He wrote a name down and said, give it to him and the, tell him he can call this gentleman right here. And, and I did call him later and I ended up going to Northern Ireland, pastored my first church there for three months while a missionary came home on furlough. Praise God. We had one member. <laughs> Great learning time for me. But he preached that day on the lamb. He started with the lamb over in Genesis and he ran the lamb all the way to the book of Revelation. And when he finished, I'd never heard anybody put the Bible together like that. And I hadn't been right with God too long. And my soul inside said, that's the kind of preaching and the feeding that you need right there. And I went up to him, didn't think he'd let me sit and talk to him. I did talk to him a little bit. I don't know if he remembers that. And uh, from that time on, he's been a help and encouragement to me. I, I know he loves the Bible. I know he loves the Lord. He loves missions. He loves souls. And um, he's just the kind of man that I want to preach to our people. We appreciate all the guests that are here tonight. But I want him to preach to Tabernacle Baptist Church because I know he's got something to say to you. I know he's been here before, but I'm glad he's back here again with us tonight. Brother James, you come preach to us. And... Uh, there you go. We're good to go right there. So, yes, sir. Amen. God bless you, friend. Thank you. Thank you. Great singing, great music, great theme, Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. Thank you for being conservative in your music. Amen. Thank you for dressing like you came to church. Amen. Thank you for having a King James Bible with you tonight. If you, if you don't, we'll get you one for free. They, they don't cost much. But uh, praise the Lord. No point in giving this up now. We're, we're so close to Jesus Christ coming again. No point in giving it up. No point in trying something else. Uh, we, don't, we, don't, we want to convert the world. We don't want the world converting the church. We, we want them to get in on what we've got. We're not longing for what they have. We're just going to stay with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. First Thessalonians chapter four tonight. It, revival. I, it was announced revival. I was asked to come and preach revival. I don't, I don't think that revival is like Bible conference. I don't think revival is like Bible school. I don't think we're searching tonight for some new thing we've never heard or some great uh, revelation that we've not seen before. I think we need to have our hearts stirred about the things we used to be excited about that for some reason or another we're no longer excited about. I understand where I am tonight. I am, I am overwhelmed with appreciation to God to let me stand in a place where so many souls have been saved, where so many lives have been changed, where so many families have been put back together, where so many great moves of God have swept through this building. But I ask you tonight, where are all those people? I ask you tonight, where are all those men that knelt at these altars and told Jesus Christ they'd serve him till they died? Where are all those people that joined this church and said they'd be here until Christ came again? I'll tell you something, they hadn't stopped believing what they believed, they just stopped being excited about it. They, intellectually, they would still give assent to all the things they gave assent to 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, some a year ago. In, in their head, it's still true. In their heart, way down there somewhere, it's still right. But in their life, it has no controlling influence over them any longer. And I'm afraid, my friend, I'm afraid our churches, we're going through the motions. We've lost the joy of things that we used to enjoy. And we've lost the excitement about things we used to be excited about. I don't want to lose that. I don't want to lose that. I got saved December 1976. And in, uh, in uh, January, the following year, just, I'd been saved about five, six weeks. I went over to man's house in a 33 and a, her, uh, and a third LP record with a sermon on it. This is pre-cassette tapes. This is pre-MP3s uh, and, and CDs and all the rest of it. Uh, a, a record album of a fellow named Bob Harrington. And you'd never let Bob Harrington preach in this church. We never let Bob Harrington preach in our church. He didn't know the difference in the rapture and the second coming, but neither did I. 
And he preached about Jesus Christ coming again. I'd never heard that before in my life. And I went, I went to church and I asked the preacher, I said, is it true this thing this man said we're going to just fly up in the air and meet the Lord? And he said, oh, yeah, that, yeah that's, that's, that's true. That's in the Bible. And I said, isn't that great? He said, it, it could happen and it might not. How can this man be my pastor? And he's not excited about this. And he wasn't excited about it. And I, and I remember we had a, a man come in to preach, not, not, but a few months later, and that man preached on the rapture of the church on a Sunday morning. And at that time, there were two traffic lights in our town. And on the way home from church, I stopped at one of the two. It was red, and I stopped at the red light. And I rolled, remember this? I rolled the window down in the car. You used to have to actually roll the window down. People still say, roll the window down, but they haven't rolled the window down. And uh, some of you never rolled the window down. But, but you, and, I, and I put my head out the window, and I was, I was looking. I was looking up in the sky and I looked over next to me and there was a man I went to church with. And he he did like that. He shook his head and I, I thought maybe he'd been in the nursery or something. He didn't, didn't hear the message and I, I pointed up and he shook his head again. And I got, to, I got to church that night and he said, what were you doing? I said, didn't you hear the preacher? Jesus Christ could come. And he said, well, you don't have to be looking. And I said, man, I wasn't looking because I had to. I was looking because I wanted to. You know something, if you, brother, they can tell you this true. If you've been saved long as I've been saved, we never said, we never said after church, I'll see you next Sunday. We said, I'll see you next Sunday if the Lord doesn't come. We didn't say goodbye. We said, I'll see you here, there, or in the air. We were certain the rapture was going to happen in 77. And we were certain it was going to happen in 78. We were certain it was going to happen in 79. And I'll tell you something. About the mid-80s, we decided the Lord's not coming. Let's get into politics. And the church started to be more concerned about the next election than they were the coming of Jesus Christ. And we paid dearly for it. We paid dearly for it. Brother, let me tell you something. Our blessed hope is not Republican. Our blessed hope is not Democrat. Our blessed hope is not next November or last November, the November to come. Our blessed hope is still Jesus Christ returning to take us out of here. And I don't care how many churches have given up on that. I don't care how many people watch the YouTube on the internet and decided they better stockpile beans to go through a tribulation. I am looking tonight for Jesus Christ to come and take me right up through this roof. Hallelujah. And if you've lost that blessed hope, you need to get it back. If you've lost that joyous expectation, you need to get it back. We need to get back to looking up at the red lights and looking up through the sunset and waking up in the morning and thinking this could be the day and going to sleep at night and thinking I might not see tomorrow morning. We used to be excited about Jesus coming again. And I'm telling you, he's coming. He's coming. You say, well, how all these years gone by, he hadn't come. It just means we're that much closer. He hadn't lied. He's never lied. He never will lie. If he said he's coming, he's coming. Yes, Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless your word to hearts tonight. We need to be revived. Thank you, Lord, for a Monday night church crowd. Thank you, Lord, for people that care enough about you and your Bible and, and your son and, and your hymn book to come to church on a Monday night. But Lord, help us. Help us. We're so caught up. We're so caught up in, in Trump and Pelosi and we're so caught up in, in, in immigrants and caravans and we're so caught up in Fox News and CNN. Lord, help us get caught up about Jesus again. Help us get excited about your coming once again, we pray in Christ's name and amen. First Thessalonians 4 and verse number 13 says, but I would not have you be ignorant, brethren. There's a lot of those, a lot of those. They're brethren, but they're ignorant. They know Christ is their Savior, but they don't know much about Him. They don't know much about His first coming or about His second coming. They don't, they, they, they don't know what He wants for their life. God doesn't want us to go on feelings and visions and emotions and think-sos and, and Facebook posts. He doesn't want us ignorant of the truth. Thank God He gave us the Bible. Concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. Praise the Lord. I don't, I don't try to be offensive. It just comes naturally. I don't, I don't set out to hurt people's feelings. They just get their feelings hurt. But I'm telling you tonight, if you're a Buddhist, you have no hope. If you're a Muslim, you have no hope. If you're a Hindu, you have no hope. If you're an unsaved Catholic or an unsaved Protestant, an unsaved Baptist, you have no hope. 
And when you bury your loved ones in the ground, you don't know what became of them. You don't know what's going to become of them. You just got to make up some mythology or some fairy tale or cling to some religion. I'm telling you, if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior tonight, you don't have to be ignorant about what happened when Grandpa died and when Grandma died and when your husband stepped through the doors of death or your wife. You don't have to worry about where that saved boy or girl is tonight. I'm telling you, God has not left us ignorant regarding life beyond the grave. Hallelujah. You know why religion doesn't know? Because Muhammad went in the grave and had nothing else to say. And Buddha went in the grave and had nothing else to say. And Confucius went in the grave and had nothing else to say. But Jesus went in the grave and came back out and said, I win, I win. Praise God. We know about life beyond the grave because our leader went in the grave and came out. He said, Behold, I am he that liveth and was dead, and I am alive forevermore. So we're not ignorant. We're not ignorant about these things. Verse 14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and join the church, and sing in the choir, and tithe, and never smoke, and never dress. That's not what he said. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, I think you ought to join a church. It won't get you in a rapture. I think you ought to give up drinking and cussing and chasing women and chasing men and chasing both. That won't get you up in a rapture. You want to you meet Jesus Christ in the air. You have got to believe that Christ died for your sins. I want you to be a good person, but good people go to hell. I want you to live a clean life, but people live clean lives and go to hell. Amen. You want, to, you want to get in on this? You've got to believe that Jesus Christ died upon that cross to pay for your sins. I know you've heard about it. Do you believe it? I know you acknowledge it. Do you believe it? Christ died for my sins on that cross. That's what he was doing there. Amen. You believe that? We believe that Jesus died and rose again. The gospel is not that Christ died. It's that Christ died and was buried. And the third day, Jesus rose again. He said, destroy this temple in three days. I'll raise it up again. His disciples said, you couldn't build this thing that fast. They didn't know what he was talking about. Every time, every time he told them, I'm going to Jerusalem. I'm going to nail to a cross. I'm going to rise from the dead. Why is Peter fighting in the garden? Why is Peter arguing with Jesus Christ? They just didn't get it down at the university, down there at Clemson, over there in Columbia, University of South Carolina, across the border and go to any of these big schools. They won't deny there was a Jesus. They won't deny he taught some things. They won't deny he had some followers. They won't even deny that he was nailed to a cross outside Jerusalem. I'll tell you what they won't touch. They won't touch that resurrection from the dead. Amen. Christ died and was buried and the third day, think about that. You got loved ones in the graveyard. You got loved ones that you had to take down the funeral home. You got people that you remember every year. That it was this day so many years ago that they passed away. Hey, listen to me. Jesus Christ died and was buried and hallelujah, he rose again. He rose again. Death, death was the undefeated champion till Jesus came. The grave never turned anybody loose but for temporary purposes until Jesus came. Well, when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, you know, he, when, he, when they went in that tomb, they didn't go in there to see if Jesus was gone. He's gone. They weren't looking for him, but here's what they found, grave clothes. You know, it had been, it'd been wise for Lazarus to tuck those away somewhere. It would have been a good idea for the widow and Nain's son to hang on to those garments. But Jesus Christ left his grave clothes behind in that tomb because he would never, never need them again. He was not going back in that grave. Just on the way out, he just said to death, and you can keep these. I won't be needing them again. Praise God. For, for the Bible says, verse number uh, 14, if we believe Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now let me ask you something. Do you, do you believe, I, I don't think there's a person here tonight that would say, God, God would not let Jesus into heaven. Come on, you know he did. Christ ascended up into heaven, sat down at the right hand of the Father. There is no, if you're a Christian tonight, there is no doubt in your mind, it is absolutely certain our Lord Jesus Christ was admitted into heaven by God the Father because of his righteousness and his holiness. Hallelujah. You know what the Lord said in this verse? Just as sure 
as God took Jesus into heaven, he'll take everybody that believed in Jesus into heaven. Hallelujah. Isn't that amazing? You, listen, you, you know why, you, do you know why God the Father let God the Son back into heaven? Because of his righteousness. You know why God the Father let God the Son back into heaven? Because of his holiness. You know what God gave you the moment you trusted Christ as your Savior? He imputed to you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You are, a, if, you're, if you believe Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again, you've trusted Christ as your Savior, it is a certain that God will let you into heaven as it is that God let his own son Jesus into heaven. How about that? It, 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 was your grandpa a Christian? Well, yes. Well, is he in heaven? Well, I hope so. You don't need to hope so. The righteousness of Jesus Christ got Jesus there and the righteousness of Jesus Christ got Grandpa there. And if you're saved and on the way home tonight, God forbid, on the way home tonight, you breathe your last breath, you slump over that steering wheel and you're absent from the body, you know where you'll be? Present with the Lord. Present with the Lord. You know why? Because Jesus' righteousness admits saved sinners into heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's our blessed hope. That's why it blows their minds when we sing at funerals. It boggles their minds when we rejoice. They come to the, to the after gathering and, and everybody's a little cautious and a little awkward because they don't know what to say. And we're crying and laughing and we're weeping and rejoicing and we're grieving and we're singing. Why? Because we know. We know that our loved ones are not rotting in a hole in the ground and that's the end of it. Did Jesus go to heaven? Did Jesus' righteousness get Jesus to heaven? Does God give that righteousness to every sinner that trusts in Christ? Then there's nothing to keep you out. Don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant, brethren. Hallelujah. The Bible says in verse number 15, for this we say unto you, by the word of the prophet, no. By the word of the president, no. By the word of the pope, no. By the word of the pastor, no. By the word of the, of, of, by the, word of the Lord. The God who cannot lie. The God who is absolutely true. This is what he said. That we which are alive and remain under the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Praise God. Now, you can argue that word prevent all you want to. People say, well, you know, I don't read the King James Bible because there's archaic words in the King James Bible. There can't be any archaic words in the King James Bible. If any, any of you read your Bible through this year, anybody, anybody here read your Bible? Praise the Lord. You know what an archaic word is? It's a word that's no longer in use. Every word in the King James Bible is still in use. There's no archaic words in the King James Bible. There might be words those educated dummies out there don't know. But us Bible-thumping hillbillies, we know all of them. Praise the Lord. That's right. So you can take this prevent one way and some people take this prevent another. Let's just take it real simple here. We which are alive and remain do some things we shouldn't do. Isn't that right? We which are alive and remain kind of get cold on God. We that are alive and remain have some attitude problems sometimes, don't we? There is nothing that I can do, there is nothing that you can do, there is nothing that all of us combined can do to prevent somebody who is saved from going to be with Jesus. How about that? I could, if you're saved, I couldn't prevent you from going to be with the Lord. If I'm saved, you cannot prevent me from going to be with the Lord. I'm going to be with the Lord on the merits of Jesus Christ. Not your merits, not my merits, not our merits, Christ Jesus, his righteousness is going to get me to heaven. Now watch this, watch this. Are, are you saved? Anybody saved tonight? Anybody here tonight? Just You saved? You sure? you sure? All right, you're saved? All right. For the Lord himself, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. I believe that. I believe that. I'm not sure this is wood. But I believe the Lord's going to descend from heaven. Amen. I'm not sure this is water. I think it is. I think this is wood. I think this is water. But it, it could be a trick. But I'm sure of this. The Lord 
himself shall descend from heaven. I'm not sure what the temperature is. I'm not sure what time it is. I am sure the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. Praise God. Now, I've got to tell you something. At our church, probably the same with this church, uh, about every day, the UPS truck pulls up. And no offense if you're a UPS truck driver, but anybody in the building can walk out and meet the UPS driver because it's not that big a deal. People come by our church almost every day who want some money, right? Want to pay the electric bill, want some groceries. We always ask them the same thing. Go get it from the people you were with Sunday. Why don't you go to your friends when you're down and out? Why do you come to people that you don't like? Anyway, anybody can meet that person at the door. But if, if some big time, big name, famous preacher pulled up, the pastor, somebody said, pastor, pastor, Dr. So-and-so is here, pastor, pa uh, brother so-and-so is here, and the pastor would go out and meet that person because they're a VIP. I've been to the White House. I, was, I went to the White House when I was uh, nine years old, and I went to the White House just a few years ago. I was met by a security guard. They told me which door to go through. I went through that door. I was met by a tour guide. You know who didn't come out to meet me? The president. You know why? Because I ain't important. Are you saved tonight and all you are is a boy or a girl in grade school? The Lord himself is going to leave heaven to meet you. Isn't that amazing? Are, are you here tonight and you just, you're just a, a fry cook in a fast food place? Are you saved? The creator of the heavens and the earth is going to leave heaven to meet you. Think about, come on, think about that. The mayor of this town wouldn't give you the time of day. The CEO of the company wouldn't look your direction. The, the rich and, 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 and up and coming superstar at the country club would not let you sit at their table. The Lord himself is going to get up off his throne at the right hand of the Father, tell the angels, you stay put, tell the cherubim and seraphim, you wait right here, and he's going to come down from heaven into the air and call for me, call for me to come up and meet him in the air. Isn't that amazing? Are you saved? Are you saved? So I've never been an important person. You're going to. You're going to. I've never met some rich, famous person. You're about to. You're about to. Tonight, the Lord of glory could step down out of heaven to give you a personal escort into the presence of God the Father. Isn't that incredible? How can you not be excited about that? How can you get excited about anything else? Isn't that incredible? Look, if, if God sent a chariot of fire like he did for Elijah, that would be a big deal. If the Lord sent Michael the archangel, that'd be a big deal. But he's not. He stands up off the throne. He tells, he tells that archangel to get his trumpet. And, and, and you can hear the host of heaven say, you want us to get the chariot? Not for this one. <laughs> Michael steps up and says, reporting for duty. He said, not for this one. I'm going to get my bride. I don't want anybody else going after my gal. How about that? The Lord, think about it. The Lord himself is going, he's going to leave heaven to come get me. He's going to leave heaven to come get you. He hasn't left heaven for 2,000 years. World War I didn't get him off his throne. World War II didn't get, get him off his throne. He never came down here to see Elvis in concert. He never came down here to see a Super Bowl. He hasn't come down here to see earthquakes, volcanoes, tidal waves, but when it's time for us to go home and be with Christ, he's going to leave. He, he is so excited about our being with him. He said, now that's worth leaving heaven for. Isn't that amazing? Kings are crowned and queens are crowned and, and empires are overthrown and Jesus sits right there at the right hand of the Father. But when the church is complete and it's time to take us home, Jesus Christ says, I, I can't sit here and wait. I got to go meet him in the air. 
Amazing, just amazing. The Bible says, for the Lord himself should descend from heaven <laughs> with a shout. Some of his people never shouted. Some of his churches forbid shouting. Some of the churches haven't shouted in so long, they're not sure if they should still do it anymore. But the Lord, the Lord, he, he's going to let out a yahoo. He's going to say, praise me. <laughs> he is so excited about the rapture. He's going to leave heaven to participate in it, and he's going to shout when he does it. Praise God. Something gets Jesus that excited, you ought to get a little worked up about it. Amen. The Lord himself should ascend from him with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. Who knew? <laughs> I, I, I'm not going there. <laughs> I'm not going there. That trump in D.C. can't raise the dead. This trump can. That trump in D.C. can't get anybody into heaven. This one can. He's going to sound that trump, praise God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. No jokes about Methodists and Presbyterians and all that. The fact of the matter is, look, look at our God. Look how, look how amazing he is. If if a man was saved, let, let's go back to Stephen. Stephen's the first martyr, Christian church. He might be the first saved person to die. Biblical, in the Bible, he's the first saved person to die after death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So they take Stephen out and they bury him. The Bible says he's, his soul's absent from the body and present with the Lord. Do you, there is no possible way that anyone on the face of this earth knows where the bones of Stephen are, much less what became of what was wrapped around those bones. But the God who numbers the very hairs on your head will go all the way back to Stephen and start with him, and he will reconstruct every body that he formed in the womb of every saved man, every saved woman, every saved boy, every saved girl, and he'll raise them up to walk in newness of life as though death had never touched them. That's some God. Why would you want to have a religion when you could have a God like that? Why would you want to have a little string of good works when you can have a God like that? Amen. He is not only going to raise the dead like Lazarus has been dead four days. He'll raise the dead, been dead for 2,000 years. It's nothing to him. He's the eternal God. Praise the Lord. Amen. The dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain. Are you alive tonight? Some of you? <laughs> That was your cue. Are you alive tonight? You remain down here after you, some of you, you buried some of your loved ones. We that are alive remain shall be caught up together with them. How about that? Now I'm going to speculate. If I speculate, I like to tell you I'm speculating. So I'm going to speculate. Let's just take this just like it's written. Didn't Christ rise first? It doesn't say they'll be caught up and we'll be caught up. It said we'll be caught up together with them. Now, wouldn't it be something if I'm standing up here preaching and I get this strange feeling come over me and I look to my right and my daddy's standing there. And before I can say, what are you doing here? Phew, we're out of here. Wouldn't that be amazing if the saints that ran these aisles if the souls that knelt at these altars, if the people used to fill this choir loft, wouldn't it be amazing if all of a sudden in the blink of an eye, they were all present with us here tonight and then before we could lose our minds, <laughs> all of us go up to meet Jesus Christ in there. Oh man, are you? Now, I, I'm not saying that's exactly how it's gonna be, but I know this. Nobody that was saved gonna be left behind. 
You can write all these books if you want about this one left behind and, and we got pork and beans stored up and, and we're going we're gonna to make it through the tribulation. You can't make it through three days without power after a hurricane. Amen. <laughs> You're not going through seven years with no food and blood and violence flowing in the streets. Why don't you just say, I, I believe I'm going two months into the tribulation then die. <laughs> People, they're overconfident. I believe we're going through the tribulation. Not likely. Why don't you practice? Go downtown Philadelphia with nothing but a pocket knife and just <laughs> start trying to take people's food away from them. <laughs> oh, brother. The Lord himself, you believe that? Yes, shall descend, you believe that? Yes. From heaven with a shout, you believe that? Yes. The dead in Christ shall rise, you believe that? Yes. Then we which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Praise the Lord. Amen. Gravity will lose its hold. Death will lose its grip. And we will just fly out of here in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, the Bible says. You won't have time to plan it. You won't have time to think about it. You won't have time to, you, here, here, there, here, there, gone, just like that. Praise God. Isn't that amazing? Bob Harrington said, I'm going to make those NASA rockets look like blue jays. I remember that. I'm going up in the rapture. In a blink of an eye, out of here. And watch this. The Bible says, Then we which are alive in Maine should be called up together to meet them in the, cloud, uh, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Meet the Lord in the air. I love your radio station. I love the music on your radio station. I, I, so, some of these songs, no offense, no offense. I'm not going to heaven to see Mama. I'm not going to heaven to see daddy. I'm not going to heaven to see Uncle Willie. I'm going to meet the Lord, the Lord in the air. The Lord in the air. I'll be with them. I'll be with you. But the wow in heaven is not my kinfolk. The wow in heaven is not my Sunday school friends. The wow in heaven is not the people I sang with in my quartet. The wow, I'm going to be with Jesus. How about that? I'm going to be with Jesus. They probably have them in Greenville down there in Orlando. They have these concerts and they bring these, these big rock and roll groups and these singers and all. They bring them to our town so we can preach to all their fans because otherwise how could we preach to 60,000 people at one time if they didn't have these events at the stadium. So we stand outside the stadium and those people come and they got, they've got tickets. And some are way up in the balconies and they got other tickets and some are kind of halfway back and they got other tickets and, and some are right there in the front row and, and some people pay a fortune for a backstage pass and they get to go back there and shake the hand of their favorite fornicator or drug addict or, or, or harlot and, and they get their picture taken so they can show all their Facebook friends that they've never met the, the picture of them with their favorite celebrity. And as soon as that picture's taken, the security people say, now get out of here. Because you only get to see that person if you pay to see them because they don't care nothing about you. As soon as you get the picture that you paid for, they run you out. Because you're nobody. I'm going to leave this world. Jesus is going to leave heaven. Me and Jesus are going to have a rendezvous that he arranged, a rendezvous that he made happen, and me and the Lord are going to hang out together for all eternity. He's not going to say, okay, you saw me, get a quick picture, and I'll get out of here. I'm going to be around his throne, you're going to be around his throne, you're going to be around his throne, you're going to, we're going to be with the Lord forever. Praise God. We go out witnessing, and I know what we mean. I'm, I'm not trying to be critical. We say to a lost person, would you like to go to heaven when you die? Here's how you can go to heaven. It's not about going to heaven. I don't want to go to heaven forever because for a thousand years of that, at least Jesus won't be there. I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm going to heaven 
I'll be with the Lord for seven years. Then we're going to get on horses and come with him down here for a thousand years. Then he's going to make a new heaven, a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. And he gave me his righteousness, so I'm going to be with him there. I'm going to be with my favorite celebrity on a personal, face-to-face -face basis forever. How can you get excited about these ball players and these singers and these movie stars? This is the creator of the heavens and the earth. This is the Lord of glory. This is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. And he's going to call you his sheep by name. And you're going to be caught up to meet him. And he's going to escort you into heaven. And he's going to get you through that judgment seat on his merits. And then you're going to say, what do we do now? He said, let's go have a thousand year celebration. So, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. I've, I've known some of you for decades, and it's been a blessing. I've known some of you for decades and not so much, but <laughs> I know some of you for decades. And, and through the years, through the years, we have communicated with each other. It's cancer, and we pray, and God heals. But look at us now. And it's a, it's a heart attack, and we pray, and God heals, but look at us now. I mean, come on. The, the, best, the best medicine in the history of the world can do is patch it up for a little while. You know what that Bible says? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, this corruptible will put on incorruption. This mortal will put on immortality. Everything of Adam will drop away and will be made just like Christ. Now think about it. And so, in the condition of resurrection without sin, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. How about that? You know, some of you through the years at the Christmas revival and, and, and Brother Logan told me that Oliver Green used to stand here and preach the Christmas revival. Do you know how good God has been to this kid to let me stand where, 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 the, 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 where Brother Seitler stood here, Brother Green stood here, just to stand here is a, is a childhood dream to preach here. But listen, you, and, and some of those meetings, you come to this altar, oh God, I love you, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do better. I'm a, and for about two weeks, boy, you were on fire for God, you're the best Christian you've ever been. But that faded out, didn't it? Lord, answer some great prayer and you get up on a mountaintop and you say, this is it, I've been on a mission trip, I'll, I'll never be the same. And two weeks later, we're the same. You know, if that rapture happens tonight, in a moment... God is going to make you the best you could ever possibly be. And you'll never be anything less again. And so, we, we're not just going to be with the Lord forever. And so, just like that, shall we be with the Lord forever and ever. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Now look what the Bible says. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I've, I've rarely found comfort in a headline. I have rarely found comfort in an internet news site. I've rarely found comfort in the outcome of an election. I have rarely found comfort in all the details of what goes on in even our best churches. But I'll tell you something comforts your heart in very, very troubled times. Ton tonight, before you fall off to sleep, this could happen. And if not tonight, tomorrow, before we meet back in this building, this could happen. I'm telling you, I first learned about this rapture in the spring of 1977, and I have not found any reason to lose hope and trust 
and confidence that my Lord Jesus Christ could come for me tonight and do exactly what he said he'd do right here. My brother, my sister, I'm glad you're part of a Monday night revival meeting crowd. But let's be honest about it. We're not excited about the rapture like we used to be. We're not looking for the coming of Christ like we used to be. And I'm telling you, there's nothing a political party is going to do to fix this mess. There's nothing an executive order is going to do to fix this mess. There's, there's nothing that church is getting. I, I'm all for getting together, working, get the gospel. But I'm telling you, this thing's this thing. You read that Bible, it's downhill to the beast. But I take great comfort, great comfort in knowing this could be my last day in this wicked world before the Lord himself descends to get me and you and everybody that's saved to dwell together with the Lord. Could we get back to not saying, see you later? Could we get back to saying, see you later unless Jesus comes? Instead of saying goodbye, could we get back to saying, I'll see you here, there, in the air? Oh, we used to be so excited about Jesus coming. He's still coming. He, he's still excited. It's shouting ground for him. Let's make it shouting ground for us again. Brother, sister, we have one blessed hope. Let's, let's not give it up. We have one thing whereby to comfort one another. Let's not lose sight of it. Hallelujah. Let's not be ignorant brethren. Let's be comforted, excited brethren. Jesus Christ is coming to take us to be with him forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this wonderful promise. Thank you for this amazing truth. Lord, revive our hearts. Revive our hearts. May we be excited about this rapture as we once were. Maybe there's some here tonight they've never heard about this. They never knew this was part of your promised program for their life. Oh, Lord, I pray you'd do for them tonight what you did for me so long ago. Help us, help us to live each day in anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. In his name we pray, amen. The pastor's on his way.